everyone, my name is Lisa McCullough. I'm 18 years old and last spring I graduated from Delaney High School. In a few short weeks, I'll be headed up to Cornell University where I'll be majoring in biology and physics. At the moment, but people change their minds so who knows where I'll end up. Well, I think a big motivation for me to be involved in science actually came from my parents. Uh, both of them are astronomers at Space Telescope Science Institute. Uh, so I've sort of always been raised in an environment where science and inquiry was the norm. Uh, however, I don't think it's necessary to have parents or really any relative who's in a science field to be interested in going into STEM. Um, I think for me, some of the biggest influences have been my teachers, particularly in high school. Um, my freshman year, I took AP Biology at Delaney, and uh, the teacher at the time, Ms. Maddox, had a big influence on how I thought about biology. In fact, I hadn't really had any training or learned much about biology up until that point. Um, but how she taught it encouraged us to ask a lot of questions and try to seek out the answers through ourselves, through um, if it wasn't covered in our textbook to look it up online, or herself having been um, in research herself prior to teaching at a high school, uh, she provided a whole new perspective that a lot of high school teachers couldn't have. After my freshman year, I sort of knew that biology was something that really fascinated me, and so for the years following, I always had that in the back of my head. I think the most important thing, um, if you discover you are interested in math and science and technology, is to take classes in those fields. Um, the sciences is such a broad uh, subject that you really want to start figuring out what particular subjects interest you, what, what draws you to science. Is it that you want to become a doctor? Do you want to be an engineer? Do you, are you, fast, or do you love math and so you want to be a physicist? Um, I think in high school in particular is a chance where you can pick your own electives so you can learn about the subjects more in depth. I think the biggest thing I would say is don't hold back. Don't keep yourself from taking a course because you think it'll be too difficult. Um, last year taking, I took AP Physics C and I was one of five girls in a 23 person class. So we were pretty vastly outnumbered but our teacher held us to the same standards, and all in all, it was the toughest class I took in high school, but it was also the most rewarding. It was never a matter of getting a good grade. In fact, he hardly ever talked about grades. It was always about um, if you started here, making it to here, and then to here. So it was kind of like um, if you're a runner, you're running against the clock and not your teammates. So that sort of fostered in the classroom a lot of collaborative learning. Uh, we all sat in groups of four, and I was always the only girl in my group, but they listened to me at just as they did anyone else at, the, at, the, at our table. I think people who can be a big influence on girls coming to STEM are, first of all, the teachers who set a collaborative environment and don't treat the girls any differently from the boys. Secondly, as a result of that, boys who realize that girls are just as smart and interesting and intelligent and can be just as good at math and science as they are, or sometimes better. And lastly, and most importantly, it requires girls like yourself to take the challenge, step outside of the box, and take those tougher classes. Go a little outside your comfort zone. A lot of people ask me when I say I want to go into biology, oh, so you want to be a doctor? Are you going to go to med school? And that's not where I see myself ending up. I see myself uh, in the future doing research at a university or at a private institution. And I think for me what draws me to research as opposed to a medical practice 
is I think research science is one of the few careers in which you never stop learning because the goal of your career is to keep asking questions and once you answer those to ask more and more and more. And the time when it really solidified for me that research was something that intrigued me was actually two summers ago when I worked as a research intern at a cell biology lab at Johns Hopkins. And I realized two big things in my time there. The first one being that science is really, really slow. We would put our little PCR samples in the machine, and PCR is a way to make lots and lots of copies of tiny strands of DNA. And it would be eight hours before our samples were ready. And sometimes it didn't work. And so in my first two weeks there, it took the whole two weeks to get a valid result. And so the first thing I realized was that science is slow. But along with that, it wasn't so much discouraging as it was inspiring to see that there are these scientists who spend all that time, who dedicate those long, long hours to maybe getting a result. And the other thing I realized is that even in the field of biology, the field of biology is so vast. You, there's something for everyone. In the lab I worked in, which was um, in which the principal investigator was Dr. Trina Schroer. This woman had dedicated her whole career as a research scientist studying two tiny proteins that exist in the cells of the human body. That's the work of their entire lab was centered on those two proteins. And her graduate student, Stephanie Ketchum, was doing her PhD thesis on two subunits of one of those proteins and how they and finding the very very specific atoms and how they connect that's how vast this field is that these people can spend their whole lives studying just these two proteins and i think that's so inspiring that someone when people are able to be passionate about something that to other people may seem really insignificant and in the, in the long run, it's those little discoveries that can eventually build up to major technological and medical advancements. For example, another member of the lab, his name is uh, Dr. Ting Yu Ye, he was studying um, how a mutation in one of those proteins led to an increased rate of infection in people with cystic fibrosis. So in the future, if you can figure out why that mutation of, it leads to an increased infection rate, it's possible that we could reverse it. Or on the complete other end of the spectrum, maybe what you discover will never lead to a big technological advancement. Or maybe it won't for decades. But the fact that these people still do it, merely for the fact of, and the ability to create new knowledge, I think that's what really inspires me. And one of my favorite moments being in this lab, was actually sitting in the lab meetings and just listening. And believe me, most of the stuff they're saying went whoosh, right over my head. Like, I would have to stop them like every five minutes and be like, okay, let me see if I got this. And I would ask questions and reiterate, and finally I would sort of have an idea of what was going on. And that was okay. They were completely understanding of that. But I think my favorite answer to get when I asked a question was, we don't know. Because if they didn't know, then nobody knew. Because they were right there at the cutting edge of their field. So if they didn't know, nobody knew. And that was what they were trying to figure out. Being in this lab with a woman principal investigator, a female graduate student, and them inviting me into their lab, I think showed me that I could be part of that. My PI told me that she had always wished, when she was my age, that she had had a woman scientist reach out to her and support her as she started her studies and began her own research. Because in a primarily male-dominated field, it can be a little overwhelming and a little difficult to see how you could see yourself as the head of a lab or as the chief surgeon at a hospital, but it can happen. So as women, 
we have a responsibility and because we have the ability to reach out to younger girls and mentor them. And so I'm very grateful that I had that opportunity. Sometimes when we think about girls entering a STEM field, we think, what do girls and women have to bring to the table that guys don't? And that's not the question we should be asking. The point is that women make up 50% of the population. And in the society where that half of the population is discouraged from pursuing careers in the STEM field, that is an untapped resource, a wealth of knowledge and potential that isn't being put to use. So whether you are a girl who is considering going to the STEM field or a boy who is considering going to the STEM field, keep that in mind that we'll only reach our full potential in terms of technology and math and science if the entire population um, is able, sees that as a possible career path. Um, in the past there have been so many women who have been at the cutting edge of their fields and you may not have heard about them because it's often the men that get put in the spotlight. But know that now that there's this big push for girls and women to be in the STEM field, there's also a push for them to be recognized for their achievements. And you can be that girl or that, and that woman who makes a difference, who wins the Nobel Prize, who discovers a cure for a rare disease. We won't be able to get to where we can be, and certainly not as quickly if we don't have girls and women involved in STEM fields. I think one of the biggest challenges facing girls today in terms of working towards uh, working in a STEM field is simply that that's not the norm. As you grow up, you don't always see yourself as that as an end goal. Part of it is that you aren't exposed to a lot of science early on, like in elementary school. Um, and part of it is that maybe a lot of your other female classmates aren't all that interested in science. Or maybe a lot of guys are and you don't really see yourself, you know, hanging out with them in their shoes. And that can be tough because you can feel a little alone or a little kind of really that you got to do it all on yourself. And that's not true because there are resources out there for you. And it starts at your school. Um, the classes you're taking, especially the science classes, whether the teacher is male or female, they're there to support you. And they're there to, fig uh, to help you figure out if what they're teaching in the classes is something you could see yourself doing in college and beyond. The biggest thing I would say to you is, again, don't hold back. Take the courses you're interested in, even the ones that you aren't really sure if you're interested in at all, but you might never have you might never know until you take them. Sometimes all it comes down to is having a really fantastic teacher. Up until last year, I was set on doing biology and only biology, and I thought, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. Well, it sounds a little crazy, right? Um, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna take this AP Physics class because I hear the teacher is really cool. And that was basically the reason I took it. Um, and it ended up being one of the, my most favorite classes I've ever taken. Um, and learning physics changed the way I sort of see the world. Um, I think physics, it describes how everything works. It describes how you know, why that, why that camera is staying on that tripod. I think my favorite part about physics was the challenge it posed. Physics is not easy. And if anyone tells you that it was easy breezy for them the first time, they are lying. 
no matter how good you think you are at math, and believe me, I, th I thought I was pretty good at math. Once you take physics, it completely changed. Like, it's, it's hard. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Very early in my year, we got, I think it was our second test back. And I, you know, I felt like I'd done pretty well on that test. I was feeling like, pretty confident, like maybe like, low B, high C, you know, pretty decent, not too great. I got a 52% on that test. It was the worst grade I got, and I'm anything graded to date. And I was like, I was almost impressed that I had, that I had done so poorly. But that wasn't how my teacher taught me to see it. He taught me to see that failing grade as an opportunity. Just because I hadn't gotten it that time doesn't mean I was never going to understand it. Just because a bunch of other people in the class had aced the test doesn't mean they were smarter than me. It just means that I need a little more time. Maybe the way it had been taught in the past hadn't quite clicked with me. We need to try a new avenue. And that's true for all the classes you're taking, be it, you know, science, be it English, be it math, be it chorus. You know, just because you can't get it the first time doesn't mean you'll never get it. And also just because you don't like something the first time doesn't mean you'll never like it either. I took physics for two years in high school. Uh, my junior year, I was not such a fan of it. I, you know, I, I kind of muddled through it, but I'm like, oh, I don't, I'm not really sure what's going on. I like, I'm like doing okay in the class, but I'm not really like interested in it. And then I took it again senior year, and it was like, wow, you know, I want to go major in this. I, I can't, like, I couldn't get enough of it, and. Even if you're sitting there thinking, oh, this doesn't apply to me because I'm not that great at math. I don't want to do math. I hate science. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go major in English or whatever. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. I think I know what I'm doing, but I really don't. And that's okay. So it's okay not to know what you want to do. And even if you do think you know what you're interested in and what you want to do, Push yourself outside the box because high school and college are one of your sort of only chances to explore and figure out what you're really interested in. So don't reject, you know, science or technology or engineering and math because, I'm not going to say because, oh, that's a guy thing. Because I think you know that. I think you know by now that girls can be all that too. But I don't want you to set it aside because at the moment it's not something you think you're interested in or not something you think that you're good at. There's no such thing as being good at things. Hard work will beat talent every time when talent doesn't work hard. So whether you think you're really good at math, you better work for it because otherwise someone who's working harder than you is going to whoop your butt. And if you're on the other end, we're like, oh man, I feel really inferior because all these other people are just get it right away. And like, I've done 20 extra practice problems and I'm still not getting it. And I go for extra help and I'm still not getting it. And I have a private tutor and I'm still not getting it. You're doing all the right things. You gotta keep trying and eventually it will click. And it will be, you will feel so amazing. And you will know that way better than anybody who just got it the first time. Because you worked for it. And you will remember it longer than they did. And you will be prouder of that achievement than they ever will be. So don't reject science and math and technology just because you don't get it the first time. Maybe you haven't had a teacher that really clicked with you. Maybe you haven't had enough extra help. Maybe the math class isn't taught the way that you need to be taught. That's fine. Just give it a shot. And don't be too hard on yourself if you can't get it the first time. My favorite go-to snack would have to be crackers and hummus. A fun tip, if you're a fan of Triscuits like me, 
you gotta like put the meat in the oven and like broil them for a little bit to get them like a little extra toasty and you can put like a little scrambled eggs on top with some sriracha it's like a tiny little egg sandwich it's, it's pretty nice um, also my go-to brain food so like before I take a big test uh, like before the morning of AP exams I would have like two fried eggs and an avocado just like a plain straight up avocado with maybe like some like lemon juice or soy sauce some toasted sesame seeds but like avocados are pretty amazing or, and cucumbers cucumbers are also my favorite I take that literally, learn anything, I would want to learn how to fly, but since that's probably not possible at the moment, maybe like, I'm torn between like, those guys that like jump off the cliffs in those squirrel suits, which is like kind of like flying, or learning the piano, because I stopped taking piano lessons when I was in fourth grade, and I regret it, because like, anyone's house you go to, they probably have a piano, and so it's a, a life skill that you can use basically anywhere. And I also really love to sing, so like it would be great if I could play the piano well enough to accompany myself. So I think learning a new instrument, learning how to jump off cliffs in a squirrel suit, both require kind of the same, you know, dedication and commitment that it would take to be in the sciences. So just keep that in mind. No matter what you end up doing, do it all the way. Don't do stuff halfway.